Hi, I'm George Nordhaus. Welcome to Monday Morning. Welcome all you elite producers. If you're not an elite producer, you will be after you start hearing this or you'll have an understanding of what is an elite producer. Uh, Randy Schwantz has got some, he's, he suggested he can double your personal income. I have some wonderful, wonderful thought if you can. I'm going to talk to him and become a producer myself maybe if he could do that. Uh, this is very interesting and, and the interesting thing about it, I've known Randy for so long and uh, all of a sudden I realized, my God, I haven't even had him on, the, on, on Monday morning and I oh, like feel like an idiot because he's so active. Well, and uh, Randy, uh, uh, tell us about yourself a little bit, will you please? Okay. Well, I, yeah, so I've been working with uh, insurance agencies since about 1992, and in fact, you're one of the first rock stars I ever met. There was, um, yeah, right. there was a guy named uh, Pat Bonds that uh, was my first client in the insurance business. He said, man, there's a guy you need to meet on the West Coast. His name is George, George Nordhaus. I mean, he's just done amazing things with this industry, and I called you, introduced myself, and you said, Randy, if you write an article, if I like it, I'll publish it. And uh, I'll never forget the name of that art. I've, I've written hundreds of articles, but that one was called uh, uh, the, the, the Buck Stops Here, The Art and Science of Doing Deals. And you published it, and it changed my life forever. So I'm always oh my grateful. God, that's, oh, I feel impressed about that. Well, you, you started the – what did you do before you got into the, did, did the wedge? Yeah, well, you know, so I was, I was in the construction business for about 10 or 12 years. And, you know, like many people, uh, when, when the mid-'80s hit and, and the economy went to, to crap – you know, the construction business died, and the subcontractors I worked for went bankrupt. And uh, so I was, I was, you know, I said, well, what's my next thing? And so I, I, I got into consulting and sales training, and then ultimately the insurance agency became my niche. And then at about 94, 95 is when the wedge really started to develop this whole concept of how to bust incumbent relationships. Because you know, George, you've been around this a long time. Back, back in the old days, it was all about build relationships, get the policies, find the coverage gap, market it, and see what happens. And uh, you know, the wedge, I've had a lot of people refer to the wedge as kind of the, the Bible of selling insurance. Well, it is because it's, 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 it's a common, I, I understand you sold over 40,000 copies of that book, The Wedge. Yeah. Oh, macro. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. unreal. And it still sells like hotcakes. <laughs> well, you're just, it's you're working. I've been in your office. We met in uh, first met in San Francisco in a, at breakfast. I'll never forget sitting there at breakfast in some, it was, I guess it was a big eye convention or something. I don't know. But there we were, and we went over it, and I didn't know what the heck you were talking about by the witch. But, boy, you've made a career out of it. Man, that's a lot of years. That's 20-some-odd years already. Where'd that go? I know. Okay. I know. Where did it go? Yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about – puppies back then. Right. All right, let's talk about elite producers. Well, you know, uh, the, what, what I want to get into is, is this whole concept of double personal income, and I want to get into the why. And, and when I put in the simple secret to financial independence – it's really about doubling your personal income, uh -huh. saving a lot more money for a long-term period of time, and that will make you financially independent. And it's so important, and we're going to get into those those reasons behind becoming an elite producer. It's in your best interest oh, let's to, do to it. become that. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Let's go to uh, let's go forward. Yeah. So when you think about elite producers, a friend of mine wrote a book called Strategic Acceleration, and, and he kind of broke it down into three, three chunks like you see here on the screen. Clarity. Get so clear on what you want. And, and we're gonna, the next slide is going to contrast this, but number one, get clear on what you want, why you want it. Number two, focus. And focus by definition is once you know what you want, I mean, we've got all these distractions we have to deal with. I'm talking about certificates, claims, CSRs. Uh, just all sorts of stuff, and if you don't find a way to block out those distractions and stay focused on what you want, then you're not going to make it. And then the third step is go execute. And if you were a carpenter or a builder or a con construction person, the way you execute is by you know doing concrete, throwing up the frame, you know doing the roof and building out. As a producer, your execution is really all about your ability to communicate and then implement what you said you would do. So if you go to the next slide. Here's where, having spent, George, did you, one day I calculated, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's hard to make it accurate, but yeah. I calculated I've spent about 15,000 hours face-to-face, one-on-one with producers. Oh, my gosh. Holy mackerel. I've trained about 6,000 of them in the wedge, and then I've run about 2,500 sales meetings. And so it's with that, ex yeah. So 2,500, oh, my God, that's unreal. It, 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 it's a lot, and so through that is where I came up to, to this. 
the non-elite producers, the, the people who are not making an extraordinary amount of money and saving a lot of money, yep. are kind of stuck in this trap. Yep. W when you get into clarity and, and, and what are your goals and why are you doing what you're doing, too many times you're doing what they're doing because the boss is making them, not because of what's important to them. In terms of focus, you see that middle little blue button. Instead yeah. of focusing on money-making activities, they're focusing on being busy. Yeah. And so then how do they ask you? They're busy, busy, busy. Yeah. And here, you look at that phrase down on the bottom. You, you ever heard of Dan Sullivan, George? Oh, sure. Yeah, he's great. He's a great speaker. Yeah. He, well, he, he this phrase is his. It says, you can't make $100,000 a year doing $12 an hour work. That's for sure. Well, yeah. you can't make $200,000 a year doing $24 an hour work. You can't make $300,000 a year doing $36 an hour work. you got to get that crap off your desk and go focus on things that really make money. All right. Let's talk and about that's it. that's the secret to becoming an elite. All right. Producer. All right. So knowing what you want is half the battle. If you'll click again, knowing why you want what you want sets you apart. So we're going to talk a lot about the why. And then the difference between an obstacle and a roadblock is knowing why. So let's talk about that for a moment. All right. Let's suppose that right now you've got a $500,000 book of business. Mm -hmm. You want to get to a million because a million throws off another one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 personal income. Right. When you know why you want that, now there's no more roadblocks. It's just obstacles you have to get through. When you don't know why you want that, you think, holy crap, I mean, I could double my ball. And all you see is roadblocks. So knowing why is yeah. so important to really become an elite producer. Uh -huh. And we're going to get into the why. Next slide. So I want everybody to start thinking about this. Because it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you save, and that's what's going to make you wealthy and financially independent. If you'll just go to the next slide, George, I'm just going to keep working through these things. Yeah, that's right. You're Here's right. The, yeah, yeah, it's good. The, the, the reason that um, that that people need to double their personal income is to become financially independent. Let's just go to the next one. All right. Yeah, and I, I just want to break down the, the, the things that I think people have to overcome to become right. financially independent. All right. No, number one, it's easy to say to yourself, oh, George, I'd love to, but I just don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. Big problem. Number mm -hmm. two, not enough special knowledge. In other words, if, if you want to be great, you've got to have special knowledge that, that attracts money. And, and when you think about it, special knowledge attracts money. Before I came up with the wedge and I was just a generalist, mm -hmm. man, you know, I mean, I, I was lucky to get $1,500 a day. After I got special knowledge, then to, to command ten to $15,000 a day became remarkably more easy. So well, as a producer, when you get great at workers' comp or, or understanding Obamacare or something that's really special that makes a difference, has a huge impact. So when you don't have special knowledge, it's going to hurt you. What's the next one? Vague goals. Most goal setting is so weak, George, and it's – and it's so intellectual. It's like, well, I just need to make more money. And, and it, it doesn't compel and drive and impassion people. So big goals, big obstacle, empty pipeline. I mean, I don't, you can go on and on about that. Go to the next one. We can get on sales calls. Don't really have a sales strategy. Still living in the 80s, still living in the 70s, thinking it's all about love and relationship and quote and then all that sort of stuff. And then the last one is limiting beliefs. Um, you know, I don't. I say this every once in a while, but you know, I, I basically I'm a redneck from Lubbock, Texas. Grew up with a bunch of farmers. Went to school for a week and a half at Tech. <laughs> moved from Lubbock to Dallas, and felt like the biggest loser on the planet. That do you remember back in the days? You, you know, SMU football. That they. Oh yeah. The, kind sure. of the joke is. Yeah. SMU had the best college football team money could buy. <laughs> Gone down a bit, hadn't it? <laughs> Just a bit. Well, yeah, after they got found out that they that were money can buy. So I remember that money can buy. Yeah, you're not supposed to be doing that in college. I understand you know? that. Yeah, right. I, and, yeah. and so moving moving from the farm to the big city, yeah. it's kind of like, man, I don't belong here. I, you know, I, I should probably go back to the farm. I mean, I'm, I don't know that I'm capable of making it in the big city. So I think a lot of people have these limiting beliefs about who you are and what you're capable of to hold you back. And when you change it from winging it on sales calls, when you find out how to prospect and fill up your pipelines, when you do all those other things, then it changes it. So let's break these down. Not enough time. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, this time, like all times, is a very good one. 
if we but know what to do with it. And so what should producers be doing with their time? Well, there's only really three things, prospect, sell, and retain. Iacocca said, if you want to make a good use of your time, you've got to know what's most important and then give it all you got. What's most important? You've got the prospect, sell, and retain. If you're not doing that with 80% of your time, and a lot of it focused on prospecting and selling, you'll never become elite, you'll never make all that money, and life won't be so good. Flip to the next one if you don't mind. You know, I, I wish I had heard this before, <laughs> about 30 years ago. Go ahead, because yeah. I'd, I'd be a lot richer. Okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, and, and you think about, uh, you, you know, we don't need money because we're greedy. We need money because we need money. It takes a lot. I mean, it's like to, to live – there's a stat, and I think I got it in here somewhere, but, George, do you know that if you decide, if and when you decide to retire and hang it up, yep. you need 22 times whatever you plan to live I've always heard that, 22 or 23 times, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to retire, so it doesn't make any difference, but I understand. Well, yeah, I got you. <laughs> but, you want, but everybody wants the freedom, too, don't they? Yeah. And if you decide to work, that's cool. So where does time go? Explain this. Uh, yeah, explain. I don't quite understand what I'm seeing here. 168 producers revenue. Give me yeah, a. Let me. I'll tell you. All right. I, I, I did. This is some research I did. All right. I had 100 CCA producers in my survey. Uh huh. And if you start at the very top, there was 16,808 yeah, yeah. commercial accounts, 100 yeah. CCA producers, yeah. 92 million dollars worth of revenue. There you go. When you break it down, that next box in yellow, here's what it, it broke down to. The average book of business was 546 thousand dollars. The average number of accounts was 106 accounts. And the average revenue account was $5,159. But oh. here's where it got remarkable. When you look at the top 20% of their accounts, which is 22, mm -hmm. out of 106, 20% of 22, right. those 22 accounts average $17,000 revenue each. Wow, what a difference. Go to the very bottom little box down here, if you would. All right. The bottom 40% of the accounts, which there are 43 of them, brought in only $22,000 and averaged $518 each. So here's the deal. Producers are busy, if they're not careful, somehow between them and the CSR managing all these crappy little non-revenue, non-producing, don't give you anything type of revenue accounts at the bottom, and it, it steals your time from being able to go do what you need to do, which is really focus on that top 20%. And think about this, George. If somebody could just go duplicate those top 22 oh my gosh. and bring in almost 400000 worth of revenue, oh. yeah. they got a huge increase in personal income. Amazing. Amazing. But why do they not do it? Yeah. They don't have a goal to do it. They don't have the time they say to do it. They don't know how to prospect those type of accounts. And so then it kills their dream of becoming an elite producer and really having personal financial independence. I think uh, over these years that I've been working uh, in this area, that I think that most of the people don't know this. I don't, be, I don't think most people understand their agency to this point. Am I wrong? Yeah, well, well no, you, you, you're, you, you're absolutely right in a, in a very literal way. They all know it conceptually. Yeah, conceptually, but, but not, on, not on this. It needs to be like this so we can see it. Yeah, and, and here's the, here's the Here's the problem with conceptual. It's just like every producer knows I need to prospect more and I need to sell more and that I need right. to do conceptual. But when you make it really black and white, that's when it causes you to take action. And, uh -huh. and every producer that I've shown this to, and then you know, uh, and then we break it down. They, you know, the, after the class, they walk up to me and go, "How do I get rid of all these crappy little accounts?" Uh -huh. Well, there's, <laughs> a, there's three ways to do it. Either, either set up a set up a small accounts department in your firm ship them off to the carriers that want to manage it or sell it off to some other broker that wants this small little stuff and you need to go focus on replicating the top 20% of your account. That's the secret to getting rich. Yeah, I talked, a to, more I, money I talked to a broker last more. a couple of weeks ago. I'm an agent and um, and he had sold his, the bottom part of his for one and a half times commission. It wasn't a bad deal, yeah. you know, and uh, I thought, oh my gosh, I, most guys give it away or walk away from it. So a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So, what happens so when you talk? Go back to time. All right. Where, where do you get time? Yeah. This, this is where you pick up time. All yeah. right. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to. The, yeah. So this is a guy named Matt. Matt just wrote me this little letter. So with your help, we did it. Three years ago on May fifth, I attended your Dallas workshop. Had a three hundred twenty thousand book of business. I just closed an account yesterday, oh, pushing my book to over six hundred fifty thousand. Wow. 
three years. It's beautiful. I mean, I, I, I've seen this story hundreds of times. Um, and we can go to the next one. We'll that's a great. That's a great agency, incidentally. Nice Lucan's down in Louisville or whatever. I, I know that agency. Yep. Yep. Next one here: special knowledge. And and here's the opposite of special knowledge. Um, there's a lot of people that were trained by an owner that said, "Go sell yourself." Have you ever heard that, George? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which is which is great advice in one way, but another way it sucks as advice. Because cause you sit there and you think about some kid that's 25 or 28 or 30 or 32, and he's trying to do it, and, and the owner said, well, well, just go sell yourself. Well, if, if they were on their game and, and blowing things out, they, they wouldn't be asking for advice. And when somebody says go sell yourself, it's like, man, that's just weak advice. Well, what am I supposed to sell about me, right? <laughs> and so it, it, I, I just hate it. Here's number two. Uh, somebody might have told you, "Hey, it's all about relationships." I hear that daily. Build relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that you know, frankly, that drives me nuts too. I mean, the, the wedge is a, is all about not only how to build relationships, but how do you bust the incumbent relationship? So when you mm -hmm. tell somebody, "Hey, go sell yourself," it's all about relationships. Get people to love you. What happens is is they 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 go in there with the whole intent. What have I got to sell other than that you love me? So I got to be really nice. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to get your policies, find a coverage gap, I'm going to market it, and just hope and pray things turn out okay. But many times they don't. And so, George, I hear stories all the time from agency owners where they're going, I can't get my guys to go after bigger accounts. Mm -hmm. And I'll go, why not? Mm -hmm. And they'll go, I don't think they have the confidence. Well, why don't you think they have the confidence? And then they'll go, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you why. Because somebody's been telling them, go sell yourself, and it's all about relationships, and nobody's taught them how to win. And then number three on this list, they bought into the story that buyers only care about price. That's the, that's the one right there, of course. But it's not true. And see, the, the reality is it's not true. Buyers care about value. I mean, it's like you're telling me about that, that great bottle that your wife brought home to you last night. That wasn't the cheapest thing on the shelf, was it? <laughs> No, it wasn't. As a matter no. of fact, no. I mean, you sit there and think about it. People buy price when it's commoditized, but they buy value when it exists. If people always bought price, they'd all be driving the cheapest car. They'd be living in the smallest house. They'd have a crappy watch. I mean, you, I mean, just name it. Yeah. People buy value, and the special knowledge is where your value comes from. Mm -hmm. That all makes sense, doesn't it? Absolutely. I'm with you. And so then they end up believing that it's about carrier relationships, but every every one of your every every producer we got on the phone, every every one of their they all got carrier relationships. They all got good people. They've all got computers. They call it cutting edge technology. And and every shop, I mean, they all know coverage. So there's no differentiators, and that's the missing knowledge. And without that, it's going to be really hard to become an elite producer. All right. Another letter. Yeah, this guy just wrote, he said, I'm convinced that the wedge is real. He goes, I'm sure you don't remember me, you know, too many of your clients. I live in the middle of nowhere, as you called it, <laughs> and he did. And he goes, I've been in the business for four and a half years. I've been very consistent. That being said, within a week of leaving the, leaving the seminar, I had just under 100 k in committed agent of record letters. Mm -hmm. Do you know how big that is? Oh, I mean. There are there – are, Thousands and thousands and thousands of producers that never wrote a hundred thousand dollars new business in their whole life on an annual basis. This guy walked away from a, a workshop week. and with, within a week had a hundred K committed agent of records. Wow. Why? Why? Because it's that special knowledge of how to leverage your differentiation, get the buyer to see they're getting screwed by the bad guy called the incumbent, and getting those guys out. So now we're talking about differentiation. Too many people when you say why you, they quote this stuff here on the left. Uh, it's our reputation, it's our great solutions, our products, our service, technology, all that crap, right? And the problem is all your competitors are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. For sure. So how do you become, you know, so this is all about, I mean, the reason we're talking today, how do you become an elite producer? How do you double your personal income? How do you become financially independent? I mean, all this stuff is interrelated, and, and you can't just take one piece of it and run. Here's the next question. Goals are vague. George, I mean, I don't know how many agency owners you've talked to about their goal setting process. I've talked to a lot, and and most of their goal setting process is kind of an annual sort of goal, like you know, what's your new business commission this year? What are your top ten accounts you're going to go after? 
And the only reason a lot of producers set goals is get the boss off their butt. <laughs> it's a bad reason. And then, then, then they even resent the boss for asking them. Their goals, man, can you imagine over one hand you sit there and think about my family, how much money I need for the, the cars, the weddings, sure. the universities, mm -hmm. how much money I need for my retirement, got that really clear and then reverse engineered it all the way back down to now how much new business I have to write to go get it. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, you know, most people are just not that connected to their goals. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the last one, so therefore they're not inspired. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't provide that enduring motivation. It's kind of just an intellectual exercise. All right. Make, yeah. Yeah. So, I like it. I'm. I'm, I'm with you 100. percent God, you're getting a lot of record. You're getting a lot of nice little letters. I like these letters. They kind of reiterate what you're saying or reinforce. Well, yeah, yeah and this will blow you away because how many times you heard people say well, we can't find new producers, yeah, and then you know, and then how effective would it be? This guy goes. Uh, it was written to, to Lewis. He goes, yeah. Curtis Stevens, one of our two new producers today, received the BORs on a school transportation account. Total revenue is $24,000. And it goes, what makes this story great is that Curtis has not only taken the wedge pledge, and we'll tell you about that in a moment if you All ask. Right. Yeah, sure, he, I will ask. He's, <laughs> he's living and breathing the cell system. But here's the part that will blow you away. This, written, this letter was written on September the 2nd of this year, uh -huh. which is just a month ago. Uh -huh. It says Curtis started on June the 15th of this year. He got his license on July 1. He had no background in insurance, and yet within six weeks, he picked up a $24,000 revenue account at BOR. <laughs> revenue, whoa. Good Lord, that's high. That's great. He must have been his it dad or something. Wasn't, he, wasn't his father, you don't think, maybe? No. <laughs> I wasn't fair. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. <laughs> but the, the point is, the point is he got real clear on his goals. Yeah. He he built special knowledge. Uh -huh. He knew what it took to win, uh -huh. and he and he became a great student of this business. Again, uh -huh. what does it take to be an elite producer? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're talking about. So let's go to this next slide. This is going to take a little interpretation. So here's the question I ask a lot of people, George. I, I and I, I you know I would ask a producer who's probably in his 45, 50 years old. I'd go, Hey man, do you do do you expect to retire someday? Do you want to retire someday? Do you want to be able to hang it up? And I'll go, yeah. Well, the day you hang it up, how much money do you need in a big old pot that's going to take you through so you never, ever have to worry about money and stress over again? Do you know? And how many people do you think know? Very few, if any. Very few, if any. So then I'll say, well, okay, well, then how much, in order to get that, how much do you have to save every year to accomplish that? Yeah. And again, they have to, well, I don't know. Well, then how big does your book of business have to be to throw off that much money, to save that much money, to have that? I don't know. Well, how much new do you have to write to be able to build your book, to throw off that much money, to save that much money so that you can be financially independent? I don't know. And so that's a problem. So I put this chart up here because here's what it is. Like if you come over under the 20-year, across to the top right, mm -hmm. which says years to retirement. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to do it's that. All right. Get back to that. Darn it. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, We're here good. we go. Okay. All right. Next one. Yeah. So, so like 20 years out, if you come down that column, yep. And and somebody wants to live, you kind of like come down to about the fifth one down where it says 34,000 a year. Yep. Mm -hmm. So right there, if somebody wants to live on 125 grand, mm -hmm. and they've got 20 years to go, they got to save 34,000 dollars a year every year. That's tough, man. That's... Well, it's not tough, and that's that's what we want to show people. So you need to have a, at least a million and a half in that bank account working. And here's another stat. If you have a, if you have a significant other, there's a greater than 50% chance one of you will live to be 92 years old. Oh. Who do you want taking care of you? <laughs> Me. Right. Yeah, <clears> Medicare, throat> Medicaid, throat> or yeah. – well, it's just the truth. And yeah, so, baby. so when you can get people to understand that and then start to reverse it – so now let's go to the next thing here. All right. How much money you need long term? Are yeah, the and then we'll go to the next one. All yeah, right. we'll just go to the next one. Next All slide. Right. Here you go. All right. Um, and just click one more time for me if you would. All right. Yeah. So we'll leave it right there. All right. Top left hand corner. Income minus expense equals savings capability. That all makes sense, doesn't it? It does to me. So it doesn't matter how much you make, it matters how much you save. And if you're not saving a lot, there's no way you're gonna become financially independent. 
So then once again, we come back down to right below that. How much do you need to save to pay for your cards, your colleges, and your weddings? I got four kids, and this is what got me cranked up in a big way. <laughs> it scared the poo out of me when my I had a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and one in the basket. And a guy came into a sales meeting that he'd been out to love it, dropping his kid off at, at you know, interestingly enough, Texas Tech, and he drove back. And he, he was late for our sales meeting that morning. I just said, well, you know, I, was at, he, 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 I didn't know that. He just came late, and I said, well, what were you doing? He goes, well, I was dropping my daughter off at Tech. Said, oh, really? And then, you know, and, and then I said, do you have any other kids in school? And he said, yeah, this is my second. And I kind of looked him square in the eyes, and I said, at least the good news is all paid for, isn't it? And he kind of shook his head. No, you know, backwards, like, no, it's not. And I'm going, holy crap. I mean, didn't he know, 19, you know 18 years ago when, when, when he did that thing with his wife that he's going to end up sending this kid <laughs> off to school, you know? But a lot of people, George, don't prepare for it. I'm sure. So the question is how much you need for that, then how much you need for retirement. And there's a stat that 80% uh, of folks will die in poverty, sustained only by Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid. Wow. And you'll see that little stat down. Most families need to save over forty-five thousand dollars a year after tax for over twenty years wow. to have what they really want. Wow! So you got to grow more. <laughs> you got to grow more, prospect more, sell more, grow more. You got to focus on what you, you know. So get clear on what you want. Focus. Eliminate those distractions. And look at here. So here's what makes it make sense to me: to save sixty thousand dollars a year, you need to make a hundred grand more. You're going to pay 40 of it to Uncle Sam, and you get to keep the extra 100, right? Oh, boy. I'm sorry. You you, you pay you, you make 100 more. Yeah, you you pay 40 to Uncle Sam. Yeah. You get to keep 60. 60, yeah. So, and then you save it every year, and then you'll be rich. <laughs> now, think about how do you make $100,000 more money? Well, you need to grow your book by 300 k Well, how do you grow your book by three? And if you're making 33% commission, how do you do that? Either write 20 accounts at 15 grand each. 30 accounts at uh -huh. 10 grand each, uh -huh. 60 at five, or 300 at one. Yeah. Well, you saw a while ago that the average account that we saw in that chart over there was $17,000. If somebody would just go write 20 more $15,000 account, they would grow by $300,000. They'd make another $100,000. They'd pay Uncle Sam, and they got $60,000 to save. It's not that hard, and it puts you on the path to amazing financial freedom. I, I think you're getting a lot of people's attention. That's, those are big numbers. Or are they? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, and here goes back to mindset. When I told you about belief systems, and, and I mean, I can't, I can't, I mean, I'm being as transparent as I can here. When I yeah. came from Lubbock, Texas to Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. I honestly, I felt like a loser. Had no college education, didn't know what to do, wasn't hanging with the right people. Everybody's wearing, you know, $100 polo shirts. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you get the point. I mean, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't think I belonged. And so I went and I, you know, I started reading a lot of books, started going to workshops, started investing money in Randy, did the fire walk with Tony Robbins, started challenging my belief system. And, you know, 20 years later, I've written seven books, made a lot of money, and it's, it's more than doable. And what people really got to understand is that it's about them making a decision about them. It's about figuring out how to get better. It's about investing in yourself. It's about deciding what you want. And that's really all I'm trying to get across today. Got it. It's not that hard. <laughs> but the pipeline. So what's the problem? Pipeline's empty. Too many people have a prospect management system where they're spread out on three by five cards and Outlook and spreadsheet and yellow pads. It's just a mess. Uh, they have call reluctance, so they either have too much pride to pick up the phone and call, or they got too much fear. You know, they're afraid to really go attack it, and so they seldom make cold calls. They seldom ask for the next deal introductions. Uh, they just don't follow through for the fear that they will, you know, get rejected or somebody will fire them or admonish them or whatever. And then they justify it by saying, "Well, y'all, I'm doing okay," and they are. But they're not doing what they're capable of doing. I got you. Right. And see, I think about it all the time, George. I don't know, you know, like I told you, I've got four daughters. And so, man, watching them play sports, I mean, you know, between my wife and I and other parents, I mean, you're sitting there hollering at your kids out there playing sports, and you, you, you're hollering at them because you see what they're capable of doing, you see what they are doing, and there's that big old performance gap. That's the only reason you holler at them. 
So sometimes <laughs> producers get mad at me that I like, you know, why are you hollering at me? I'm hollering at you because I see what you're capable of doing and being. I see at the level that you're performing, there's this big old gap between what you're capable of and what you're doing. Come on, man, let's go get it. That's why I holler. <laughs> I got you. So we can break down this whole thing about making cold calls, but but instead of having these bold statements that grabs people's attention, I think like if when you're getting on the telephone, yep. it's like you and I are on the phone right now. Man, if I cold call you, here's the visual I have in my head, George. Mm -hmm. Imagine this. Mm -hmm. I see George over there, you know, up to his eyebrows and stuff that you got going on. And if I call you and lucky enough to get you on the telephone, you're going to try to blow me off as fast as possible. So if I can't reach to the phone with both my hands, grab your scalp, rip it back, expose your brain, take my other hand, just scratch your brain, some blood's going everywhere to get your attention. If I can't do that, you're going to blow me off. And so training producers how to make bold statements to grab people's attention is really, really important. And then even when you do, you see next year is they've got these knee-jerk reactions. You know, it, it, knee jerk just means that there's about six things that every prospect says when you call them, kind of like, uh, well, we just renewed, uh, been with my agent for 20 years, we're not changing, mm -hmm. crap like that, that if they're not prepared for it, they're going to get blown off. So anyway, making cold calls is, you know, whether you do that or go to the next slide. Yep. Getting introductions. George, you think about it. Just like that, that example I had up there. 106 accounts, 22, of their, 22 accounts were their best accounts. All 22 of those buyers that they have, they've got great relationships with. All 22 of those, those people know people they want to meet, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you be a business owner and not know a lot of other business owners? But my, my stats are that, that, the, that when I got a group of 20 producers in the room, only mm -hmm. about one or two out of 20 are working their clients for introductions. Amazing. Amazing. Why is it so obvious? You know, I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here very quiet because, you know, I guess I've heard this many, many, many times, but obviously it's not sinking in to a lot of people. Yeah, and I, th I think, you know, so I go back to why not. I, I think it's either apathy, I just don't care. It's ignorance, I don't know how much I really need to make, or it's fear. I know it. I want it, but I'm afraid to go do it. It's got to yeah. be one of those three things: apathy, yeah. ignorance, financial ignorance, or fear. I agree with you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Wing it. So I'm not. Yeah. So then they wing it on sales calls. Uh, you know, people hire you because they like you, but they also fire the incumbent because they're sick of their BS. Everybody knows that conceptually. The question is, if you don't have a process to get your competition fired mm -hmm. on purpose every time, then you're winging it. Uh -huh. So, so beliefs. you could go figure that out. So, limited beliefs. Never bought into the fact that as a professional salesperson, a sales entrepreneur, the best investment you could ever make is in yourself. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's true now more so than ever. And I'm just encouraging people, don't wait for things to get better. You must get better. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? Is the economy going to get you there? Is Obama going to get you there? Is the next you know, presidential candidate going to get you there? Is your agency owner going to get you there? Is your mama, or your daddy, your brother, your sister, your wife, whoever going to get you there? No. There's only one person that's going to get you there. And, it's you. That is. and the only way you're going to get there is because you got better. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Am I preaching too much, George? Well, uh, I, I think that I, I've been thinking about that a little bit. I mean, yeah, I think we're both preaching, and I think that we do that as we get older and a lot. Uh, but on the other hand, I also know there's a lot of producers out there, and not necessarily young ones, who need this so badly because they don't hear this. I mean, they, they sort of hear it in the background. But you're coming right at them, and, and uh, you know, when you show those numbers that need to be done, I mean, that gets my attention. That that sobers up anybody. All of a sudden, you realize, holy mackerel, I can't live on $100,000 a year, whatever it is. I can't do it yeah. and, and, and make it. So, no, I, I, I think I think it's necessary sometime, and we'll do it. And we'll use this we'll use this as the basics, one of the basics programs, which I'll tell you about later on. Uh, and we'll t I'll tell the people about later. But go ahead. 
Yeah, in fact, I mean, back to what you just said, you, you'd be amazed how many 50-year-old guys I've had come to the workshop and go, God, I wish I'd met you 30 years ago. <laughs> and then I'll sit there and go, well, look, 50 is the new 40. You're not that old. And at 50 years old, you've spent all your time, energy, and money getting your kids through college and all that sort of stuff. Now the next 20 years is your time to load up, and you're yep. capable. So let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. Let's all rock right. and roll. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, everyone's off to like a coach on the sideline, you know, screaming at the kids, let's go do what you're capable of doing. All right. And if you're not capable, fine. But most people are. So anyway, I just go back. As producers, what do we need? We need to prospect. We need to sell. We need to retain. We need to do that at all higher levels. How do right. you do that? You've got to yeah. train for skills. You've got to get better, better, better. You've got to go execute, make it happen. Then you measure and analyze your results, and it tells you what then you need to get better at. Yeah. And that's just, that source. Simple as that, isn't it? <laughs> It is. And, and, and think about this, George. Uh, yeah. Again, I'm going to meddling again. You well, know, I, I've had a, I've had a lot of agency owners. That, you know, they'll, they'll send a producer like to the wedge workshop. Yep. And then, and then that producer will come back home on fire. I imagine. And, and for 90 to 120 days, or maybe 180 days, I mean, they'll just be kicking it. And then I'll end up talking to that, that agency owner in about nine months. You know, nine months afterwards, and I'll go. You know, how's it going? And they'll go, Oh God, man, that guy was on fire for the first for the first you know four, five, six months, but they kind of died off. I yeah. guess that stuff just doesn't work. Uh-huh. And I and I don't want to reach through the phone and just grab and choke that guy because I'm sitting there going, <laughs> Man, you need to follow through, support. I mean, think about your children. You just didn't send them off to like a weekend coaching camp for how to be a better volleyball and say, Hey, you're on your own. You got to support that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so anyway, I, I just come back to this, man. Okay. I think agencies need to see themselves in the training business when it comes to producers uh-huh. Uh-huh. and keep make just like you do with athletes. I agree. You never yeah. stop. So anyway, okay. I'm done. I'm not going to preach it. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, goals, goals, goals. Well, you know, you said you said I didn't realize you'd written seven books. But anyway, these are some of your books. Yeah. Oh, this. No, is, no that's Napoleon Hill. What am I thinking about? Yeah, I mean that's that's the great think and grow rich, think and become financially independent, think and do. And so, you know, Napoleon Hill talks about this all the time. He said that the, the, the you know there's 17 keys to success, but here was like the three that stuck out of me. You got to have a burning desire. And so I'm trying to help tap into people's burning desire. Imagine living in poverty. Imagine just living okay. Imagine not being able to send your kids to the school they want to go to. Imagine telling your spouse, hey, honey, I'm sorry. I just That's the best I could do. I just can't imagine that, right? right. So when you get clear on what you want, that desire just starts to crank up. Number two, he says you've got to have special knowledge. You can't be a generalist. You can't be a… Uh, I got it. Yeah. Dallas. And then number three, the really, really successful people, man, they – make decisions. They don't procrastinate their whole life. Good. And the problem is if you go to the next slide, there's a lot of people that live in this this world of uh, oh man, skip that one. <laughs> skip that one? <laughs> All right. Well well I, I don't know. I'm okay with going back to that. I don't um, but if you don't, right. mind, yeah. I don't, I don't mind. Yeah I mean I don't know why people got on this webinar today, but I'm imagining they need more time, um, that they're too busy, that they want to write more new business, that every account they want, the incumbent controls it, so the incumbent's a problem, that they find that differentiating themselves is hard, and that they've got great relationships, but they're not getting near the introductions they need. Mm -hmm. That's what I imagine is going on and why most people get on these webinars. So if you go to the, the next slide, then really what happens is, People end up all these good intentions, but then it goes to kind of to the, in, the good intention graveyard, where you know kind of the the, the 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 I should do this and I'll do it tomorrow, and they don't get around to doing it now, which is really what they need to do, which is really in their own best interest. So, well, listen, I think I, I well, let me interrupt here just a second now. I uh, as the, our listeners know, uh, we. We don't try. We try not to sell things, and this is not a sales thing. But when I talk to you, and I, I know how many people have been to the wedge, and uh, and I've listened, and all that sort of thing, 
<clears throat> I got you to make me a deal for our people who are listening, and I really greatly appreciate that. Let's let's tell them about it because I, I think at this stage of the game, I think let's take action. All right. All right. Tell us. Tell yeah. us. This is your sale. This is your meeting. How often do you have these? I do this once a quarter. Oh, once a quarter. All right. So the next one's November the third and the fifth up down in Dallas area. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Plano, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us and, about it. What do you do? Well, it's good. Yeah. It's, it's a, so I call it a three-in-one workshop because we we go through two days of the wedge, how to get your competition fired, working on differentiation, working on yeah. uh, the dialogue, what you say exactly. We spend a half a day on how to get red hot introductions, so you're leveraging those relationships. And then we spend a couple hours of going through the, the, the mechanical part of the double your personal income, looking at your book of business and what's making you money and what's just taking your time. And, uh, you know, there's only 20 to 30 people, sometimes 35 at a meeting like this. Yeah. Uh, that, but anyway, that's our agenda. That's that's what we do, and it's, oh, it's all around that. helping you double your personal income. Because and look at this! It. Look at this! This is amazing. I'm glad you did this. I appreciate. It. I love that promo code, code George. That's wild. Oh yeah, boy. So I, yeah, and just I mean, if anybody's seen any of my stuff, I've I've never given this kind of discount before. Uh, just never have. But I just I got because because you're yeah. hosting this, I'm I'm willing to do it this time. So well. Uh, Five hundred dollars off. It's good till Friday, this coming Friday, mm -hmm. October the ninth, till five o'clock, and then we're gonna shut it down. And the way you go find it is you just that you see that URL at the top three and three and one dot the wedge dot net. Yeah, or here, and right down here in the bottom. Or I think you're right yeah. there too. Same thing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And then you you just put in that that uh, that promo code George. G E O R G E, all capital letters, uh -huh. and you'll get that five hundred dollar discount. Randy, there's this. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful uh, 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 presentation Monday morning for agents, who or agency owners, to get every producer. I don't care if they're really hitting it or not hitting it, to get every producer to listen to this. They've got to. I don't mean just a set webinar and the I mean that. I mean the uh, the me meeting. But listen to the to the Monday morning. But the uh, the meeting is because it can really change your life, and so you spend the. Uh, Two hundred grand or two and a half grand for transportation, all that kind of stuff. I mean, come on, that is just nothing compared to uh, that's one sale. And I can tell you that I know a heck of a lot of Asians who've gone to this and have come out, and they're a lot richer than I am, probably. <laughs> I'm happy for them. Okay, are there any last words you have for us today, my friend? Well, yeah, I, I mean, the only last words is, is uh, to, for me, it's not about the wedge, and it's not about the training and all sorts of stuff. It's about you getting clear on what you want and why you want it, and go look in the mirror and, and think about your family and go, am I doing the best I can for them and me? If the answer is yes, maybe you don't want, want to come or don't need to come. If you see a gap between what you're capable of and where you are right now and you want to close that gap, then it's a must. You take action and, and you come, and it, it's going to be a great workshop. It always is. Uh, always is. I bet. And I bet those people. I bet there's a lot of communication between the people who are attending too. You know, I do yep. this and you do that, and oh yeah, and good ideas you get from other agents. I know those kinds of things too. Well, Randy, thank you again, and uh, uh, I look forward to working with you. We're going to be doing some other things together, which I'm just hinting at right now. But in about three weeks or four weeks, you're going to hear about something that's going to blow your socks off for our Monday morning. Randy's going to help me with it, and so are some other uh, terrific consultants, etc. And we'll, but we'll let you know later on. So hold your breath, and I'll see you again next Monday morning.